In a previous video, I discussed the genetic basis of cancer. However, in this video, we're going to be looking at how viruses can actually cause cancer. Let's start by looking at it on a cellular level. So let's say that we have a virus here and it infects our cell. Let's say this is the host cell nucleus right here and this is the genetic information from the virus. If the virus is something called a provirus, it's going to insert its genetic information into the host cell DNA. Some examples of this are HIV and HPV. HPV is a DNA virus and HIV is an RNA virus. Because HIV is an RNA virus, it's what we call a retrovirus which is going to take an RNA genome and turn it into DNA, which is then inserted into our DNA genome. So let's take a closer look at this DNA and let's evaluate how this could cause cancer. Let's start here with the host chromosome and a gene that can either be a tumor suppressing gene or a proto-oncogene. If this provirus is inserted near one of these potentially cancer causing genes, this tumor suppressor gene or this proto-oncogene can go on and become mutated in a way that will either turn this into a mutant tumor suppressing gene or an oncogene Either way, paving the way for the creation of cancer. Because viruses seek to replicate as much as possible as fast as possible, we consider their promoters to be hot promoters. This is because these promoters, by design, are not regulated so they can be very transcriptionally active. If a provirus with a hot promoter is inserted near a proto-oncogene, this hot promoter could actually end up becoming a promoter for this proto-oncogene forming an oncogene. If this is the case, this could be something that can lead to cancer. So again, viruses are going to cause cancer either by inserting a provirus near a tumor suppressing gene or a proto-oncogene, which is going to cause a mutation that can cause it to become cancerous, or by inserting a hot promoter near a proto-oncogene. It's important to look at how infectious agents cause cancer because about 20 to 25 percent of cancers come from infectious agents and about half of that, or about 12% of all cancers, are caused by viruses. Particularly of interest in this is HPV, which is responsible for about 30% of these infectious agent-induced cancers, which is about 7% of all human cancers. In fact, research has found that in certain reproductive cancers, as well as in oropharyngeal cancers, 12 to 99% can be traced back to HPV. However, even though HPV is a largely uncurable disease and the prognosis of many of the associated cancers are very grim, there is vaccination. The FDA reported a 96.7% efficacy for the best product on the market. Regardless, it's important to understand how infectious agents can cause cancer within cells and what we can do to reduce the risk of those cancers from the root. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are currently enrolled as a Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need to know about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu. tutoring You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online through Navigate, or just drop in during our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.